Good evening and welcome to Firelands Health Stadium here on the campus of Sandusky Perkins High School where tonight we bring you Division 4 Region 14 football action. That would be the Van Wert Cougars with a 10-1 record. They're here to play the, the Sandusky Perkins team who also has a 10-1 record. My name is Mark Shine. It's my pleasure to do play-by-play -play alongside Mr. Darren Gilbert. Darren, we've got a couple of 10-1 teams and quite honestly teams that are about as evenly matched as you can think of stat-wise. Compar very comparable there with, with their points per game uh, differential. Uh, two outstanding quarterbacks on both sides of the ball. Uh, both teams run the ball effectively. Both teams throw the ball effectively. One quarterback, uh, Mr. Lesh from Sadusky Perkins at 76% throwing the football, which is absolutely incredible. 32 touchdowns, eight interceptions. Then you go over to Aiden Pratt, who's just had a phenomenal year himself. Almost 3,000 yards in the air, 35 touchdowns, only three interceptions, and a very respectable 71%. Running the football, as I said, uh, both teams do it very well, yards per average, and both ball clubs have receivers that are capable of catching the football and, and having lots of yards after contact. So it's going to be a great game tonight. Well, Darren, at this point in the, of the season, injuries become an important situation, and one of them that uh, Van Wert has to deal with tonight Ashton Bayer, who had four interceptions on the season, is not going to play tonight due to a lower body injury. And with a team that throws the football as well as the Perkins the Pirates do, that that's, could be a problem. Well, you've got to go with the, the mentality of next man up. And I know uh, the coaching staff, you know, believe in the young man that's going to be playing there. It depends on how many adjustments they're going to make defensively. But I can guarantee the kid that's going to come in and play in that position, Mr. Seaman, is going to give a great effort. Well, here's another, another stat that may well uh, prove of this time for the Cougars, perhaps. Steeman average is better than 37 yards per punt. Ver Verducci, who punts for Perkins, averages only 26 yards per punt in a field position game. That might be important, and we have a very breezy night tonight, so we'll have to see how all that plays out as well. We're about five minutes away from kickoff. We have the Van Wert Cougars. We have the Sandusky Perkins Pirates. They're both 10-1. and one. We'll be back with a kickoff in about five minutes. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. We're back at Sandusky Perkins High School. We're about a minute away from the opening kickoff. Our weather is a very beautiful 69 degrees tonight, Darren. There is a breeze of about 11 miles per hour, and it will be behind the Perkins Pirates here in the opening quarter. Perkins in the black uniforms, white helmets. Van Wert Cougars, white uniforms, red hats, and their red pants. And uh, Darren, Van Wert won the toss and elected to take the football. Yeah, that's one of the things we just discussed for coming back on and you know, I'm wondering if, you know, Coach Recker's philosophy is here after seeing the stats that Sandusky's per, put up. First half of the year, they've scored an amazing 248 points just in the first two quarters and only given up 88. And they have an outstanding kicking game with Josh, uh, or excuse me, John Slay with 49 extra points and seven field goals. So our officiating crew this evening, Kevin Aller, Rick Bokersik, Tom Gibson, Devin Aller, and Sam Kuhn. Head official tonight in a white hat is Kevin Aller. The man that uh, Darren just mentioned, John Slay, is about to kick off. And deep for Van Wert. Looks like we have uh, J uh, Carson Smith and uh, Luke Campbell back there, I believe. Yeah, I can't quite yeah, tell. The, well, we will be very honest with you. Our press box view is not of the greatest. It looks like number six, Nate Phillips, is back there uh, along Good with call. Connor Campbell. Yep. And we will do our very best to provide the uh, description that we can. We've got, <laughs> shall we say, pillars in our way at times, Darren. How's that? <laughs> Here's the kickoff. Ball's dribbled down the field. It bounces around and gets picked up up front. This is Reese Crew. Nice job by that young man and picking Reese up the football. We'll take the football. Van Wert, Darren mentioned their quarterback. It is Aiden Pratt. 206 completions, 292 throws, three INTs. He is 38 yards short of having 3,000 yards on the season. And he's thrown for 35 touchdowns. He's also rushed for 664 yards and 10 scores. His leading ball carrier will be Brylon Parker. He wears number seven. 
753 yards on the ground for him and 17 scores. He is not currently in the backfield along with Pratt. Pratt, quick out. This ball is caught on the far side of the field by Crutchfield. And that will be a very short game. Appears to be Zach Operzadik on the stop. Single yard pickup. Cougars back to the line of scrimmage. Single back is Pratt. He's going to step to throw again. Quick pass out. That's also caught by Crutchfield. So a couple of quick completions. He's getting the ball in his hands very quickly in his possession. Yeah, they're trying to go up tempo, aren't they? Met at the bounder by Wes Sturzinger. They need three on third down. Trips left, two receivers right. Quick out. That also is caught on the far side. That also is complete to Crutchfield. And we have a first down. Our first down is sponsored by Leland Smith Insurance Services. Your first call for all of your insurance needs. Wes Sturzinger on the stop again for the Pirates. First down, 49 of the Pirates. Perkins gives up 15.3 points per game. Van Wert scores it at 45.9. Here's Parker in the backfield now along with Pratt. And he goes in motion. Pratt to throw. Going to throw it over the middle of the field. He's got a guy wide open. There's Crutchfield in the middle of the field. And Maddox Crutchfield has his 12th rush catching touchdown of the season. And Van Wert strikes first. Yeah, just that motion of putting Parker in motion just confused the defense of Perkins, and they got a one-on-one -on -one matchup that appeared on the linebacker, and the linebacker got confused, and Van Wert's receiver got behind the defense and took it to pay dirt. Six Van Wert, all of 47 seconds to go 62 yards and score. Here's Damon McCracken for the PAT attempt. Extra points are sponsored by Lee Kinsel, sales and service. Snap, hold, kick. Kick sails through, and in 47 seconds, Van Wert takes a 7-0 lead. You're watching high school playoff football on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight is sponsored by Loudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them in Coldwater or in Van Wert, or you can go online at loudix.com. Now we know why Coach Recker took the ball. Absolutely. He had confidence in his quarterback and his offense to execute. That's exactly what they did and got an early 7 to nothing lead here at Perkins High School. Here's McCracken. He will do the kickoff duties. Deep is, uh, I think that's Caden Nixon on the far side of the field. And that ball has sailed into the wind. That's not Nixon. Excuse me, that's Nemitz. And he's going to bring the ball straight up the middle of the field. He's around the 20. And this is where Perkins will begin in their first possession. Their quarterback is Logan Lesh. He is 189 of 249 this year with eight INTs. He's thrown for 2,805 yards, 32 scores. And much like Aiden Pratt, he has rushed for just under 600 yards. And he has five scores as well. Campbell and Steeman on the stop for the Cougars on that kickoff. In the backfield will be Isaac Bunts. And you can see the look to the sideline. This is the player of the year in the Sandusky Bay Conference Lake Division. That would be Logan Lesh. And he will quick out on this side as well. This ball is caught by Jaden Rowe. And he's got room to run. And he's going to get a first down. Yeah, the, the, when that young man gets out into the flat, he is just a doggone strong. And we've only watched one play, but man, is he athletic. Two nice blocks by the receivers to spring him free. 23-yard pickup to the 46. Appeared to be Luke Wessel on the stop for the Cougars. Same play, other side of the formation. This also is Rowe, and he's going to pick up another first down into Cougar territory. It's like basketball and grass right now. My goodness. Reese Crew on the stop. To the 40-yard line. Works on one side, why not go to the why other? Why not go to the other side, that is correct. Jaden Rao, 53 catches, 690 yards, five scores, the second team all-conference player. This is Butts in the backfield along with Lesh. Lesh is going to bounce it outside this time. 
And Lesh will go down at about the 33 or 4 yard line. We'll see what the spot is. Yeah, the young man slid down there. Got as much as he could. He got about six. He did to the 34 yard line where it'll be second and four. Very heady play by that young man. Trips left. Still 15 on the play clock, so plenty of time for Lesh to get the call from Coach Jalen Santoro. His fourth year here at Perkins. This will be Lesh up the middle. Not as much room to run this time. It'll be third down. We'll call it the 32-yard line. McCracken on the stop along with Jones and Dotson for the Cougars. He needs to get to just outside the 30 for a first down. It is third down and a couple. Logan Lesh is a junior, weighs 190. He's running back beside him. Isaac Butts is a 5'9 sophomore. He goes 180. It's like maybe a play change here as Lesh walks up and gives some instructions to his line. Yeah, I'm just curious if they're going to try to go right to row on the. Well, you called yep, that right. But what do we got? Motion penalties. Going to walk them back five. So that will change the calls. It will go to third and eight. Yeah, they only needed about two yards there. Unfortunately, yeah. they, that penalty, you know, hurt yeah. them right there. But if they would have just got him the football, I think he would have managed to get those two, three yeah. yards. Bunch formation right, single receiver left for Lesh. It is third and a lengthy seven. Lesh to throw. Pratt comes off the edge. Got a guy out on the perimeter. And he missed him on the sideline. He tried to squeeze it in on the far side to Braylon Collier, and that will fall incomplete. We'll go to fourth down. Yeah, he was in a one-on-one -on -one situation. It appeared to be against Crew, and he was open, just overshot him a little bit. Appears they're going to go for it. One would think so. And, and Darren, you know, they had the wind behind them, and perhaps that was a situation where the ball sailed that time with the wind behind them. Here's that bunch formation, same formation they had a moment ago. Collier goes all the way to the left and four receivers to the right. It's third and a long seven. Pratt comes off the edge again. Ball's thrown in the middle. It's missed. Good tackle in the middle of the field by Carson Smith. Knocked the ball loose. Big hit. And that ball will fall incomplete. And the Van Wert Cougars will take over with 8.21 to go here in quarter number one. You made a great point. That win could play a factor before the evening's over. Thank goodness they're playing tonight, not instead of tomorrow when we're talking 40-mile-an-hour wins. So the football will go to Van Wert on their own 37. Their last drive started on their own 38. It took them all of four plays and 47 seconds to get into the end zone thanks to a Pratt to Crutchfield touchdown pass of 49 yards. Here's Pratt again alone in the backfield as the receivers go three to the right and two to his left. Pratt looks over the middle, tucks it down, and throws it towards the sideline. We'll throw it incomplete. Yeah, that's one of those he was under distress right there. It appeared to be Mr. Rowe right there putting some extensive pressure on him. He was, in, you know, fortunate to get away and just tossed it out of bounds. You know, Rowe coming in, you know, you mentioned his numbers offensively. Defensively, he led the team with five quarterback sacks. Pratt's got... Parker on his right hip. Let's see if they stay with that formation as they check the play call. And Pratt goes up and relays instructions to his offensive line. Play clock's down at five. Pratt keeps and will duck his head and use his 205 pound body and spring forward to about the 40. Austin Yoakum, first to make contact. For Perkins. This will be third and seven from the 40. I believe that's our first running play. It is for the uh, Van Wert Cougars. This time the receivers go three to Pratt's left and two to the right. Here's the 
Here's Pratt to throw. And he got caught from behind. Guess who, Darren? Yep. There he is. There's the man that puts extensive pressure on the quarterback. He's long and he's athletic, and he just beat the tackle on the right side and, and got to Pratt. Pratt had no opportunity to get rid of that football. The sack takes the football back to the 31. That was Rowe who Ooh. just blew around that uh, left side of the formation or left de defensive side of the formation. Here's the punter. Mentioned the fact that Steeman averages 37.1 yards per punt. He's had a heck of a year. I think he's first in the WBL in punting. Punting into the wind. A little bit of a high snap. Gets that one away. Have a low line driver. It's going to take a nice hop. This is going to be a really good punt. Steeman punt rolls all the way down to the 20-yard line. That's a 49-yard punt. That's a good one. 6.46 to go here in our opening quarter. We mentioned that Leland Smith is our first down Sponsor this evening, Leland Smith Insurance Services. Your first call for all of your insurance needs, and we appreciate them this evening. It is first down Perkins, and they're going to go with that bunch formation again to the right side of Logan Lesh. Quick look to the sideline. Play clock still at 14. Single receiver at the top of your screen is Braylon, Braylon Collier, and that pass is intended for him, and he's going to be brought down immediately on a tackle by Reese Crew. Nice open field tackle, nice pitch and catch there by Lesh to Collier. Football goes to the 26-yard line, just outside the 25. Be third down at about five. Actually, second. Second down. I'll get it right there. It's okay. Yeah. Look, fake. Logan Lesh runs up the middle where he's brought down. Can you see who's on the bottom of the pile? That was 53 on the bottom. That's Jacob first. Nice play by that young man. Appeared to be a hole there in the defensive line, but Van Wert did a really good job grappling with the offensive linemen, holding their positions. Balls Laban the, Fierce to make that stop. Ball's in the 26 and a half yard line. They need to get to the 30 for a first down. It's third down here. Here's the quick out. This will be caught on this side of the field and Got a close to the, the first down. Yeah, close to the first down is Weston Sturzinger. He had 12 catches. 12 catches, 641 yards. That's doing some wheel work, isn't it? Yes, it is, I think. Let's see what we the call have is. A hold here. Yeah, we'll see what the call is because of. Pirates are walking backwards on this one. Van Wert did a much better job defending that. Parker did an excellent job getting away from his defender there on that pass block. I didn't see where the – was he going to have a first down? I wasn't – Yeah, I, it was going to be really one, close, yeah. yeah. The penalty is going to take it back. However, that becomes a moot point. All the way back to the – looks like the 15-yard line or just inside of it. So now it's going to be third and 15. Yeah, Braylon Parker did a great job turning that football back inside to his teammates to convert on the play. Van Wert Coopers, they give up 16.6 .6 points per game. Bunts in the backfield along with Logan Lesh. Logan Lesh flushed out of the pocket, looks, going to loft it downfield, and oh, what a catch. No, I got oh, locked loose. It. That was a big hit by Luke Wessel because sure it looked like Jaden Rao had the football. Yeah, he went up to get it like an offensive rebound and had both hands on it. Mr. Wessel came in and knocked it away. Good play by Wessel. Pretty good risky pass, but when you got a guy with wheels to get up in the air like absolutely. that, he went up and snatched that At one. 6'5 with a wingspan of like a seven footer, absolutely. Yeah. Here's Venerucci to punt. He's got the wind behind him this time, but uh, his average this year has only been 26 yards, and Cougars are setting up inside the 50, even with the wind. Here's a punt. High punt's going to head out of bounds, it looks like, and that it does, and the Cougars are going to have great field possession for possession. Number three with 5.36 to go here in our opening quarter. About the 39-yard line. Season 18 of the Sports Report. So on every Friday night, you can join Patrick Kamler for a full hour of the most comprehensive football coverage around. 
every Friday night at 10 p.m. on WTLW. That will be true through the playoffs, and then we'll switch to basketball. And you are correct, Darren. This possession will begin on the 39 of the Pirates, already trailing 7-0. Perkins had a drive that stalled out after six plays, and that was a three and out right there. Here's Pratt with three receivers to his right and two to his left. Pratt's going to run it himself, and he is going to get about five to the 34-yard line. Sturzinger on the stop and Meggett. So defensively, uh, to, to, so, so dangerous to play man-to-man -man when you've got a running quarterback. You're chasing guys around. You don't see that run, running quarterback behind you sometimes. Pratt's going to roll right. Look first, throws it out, and he missed a man on the sideline. Looks like he was after Crutchfield again. That will go incomplete to Crutchfield. Going to need about five on third down for the Cougars. Pretty well defended there by Mike Young. Tough window to get that football in. Good job by that young man defending. Right on Parker will be to the left hip this time of Aiden Pratt. Pitch inside and ball's loose. Is that a pass? What an, is that? I think that's incomplete. Yeah, yeah. It almost looked like a uh, one of those Travis Kelsey passes that. Kansas City runs and he Parker, dropped it. Parker was trying to get out of traffic and, and was knocked down trying to get to the football. Or stumbled over somebody's leg or something in the middle there. It is fourth down now, Cougars, from the 34 of the Perkins. This would be a huge stop for the Pirates. Parker will set up again on the left hip of Pratt. Parker goes in motion. Blitz coming up the middle. Pratt rolls right, throws it towards the end zone, and did he catch it? He did. He did. Connor Campbell went up and snatched it out of the air. It's a six-point score for the Van Wert Cougars. Trying to see who was on the play back here. It looked like Sturzinger. Connor Campbell's 10th TD catch of the year puts the Cougars up 13, pending the PAT. What a throw. What a catch. What a catch. Here's McCracken on for the PAT attempt. Just a four play drive to go 34 yards. And a kick is blocked. So the PAT attempt will not be good, but it will be a 13 to nothing Cougar lead. You're watching High School Playoff Football, WOSN. Our extra points tonight are brought to you by Lee Kinsel on Urban Road in Van Wert. Take a look at our pre-owned specials at LeeKinsel.com. Although that extra point was blocked by McCracken, his team has a 13-point lead, and the game has started very well if you're a Van Wert Cougar. Here's McCracken's kickoff. And we're waiting for Kevin Auer, our guy in the white hat, to put the ball in play. Now he did. Hopefully that next extra point doesn't come back later on in the game for Van Wert. McCracken had been 57 out of 67 on the season before the tonight's contest. He's made one, missed one. That ball is going to be headed down into White Nemitz's hands. And Nemitz makes the first guy miss. Look out. And he gets up to the 30-yard line before he's brought down. Perkins drives have started on their own 23, their own 20, and now they will start on their 30. So best starting position for them this evening. Briston Wise on the stop with number 28, Reese Crew. Cougars went 39 yards, four plays, 39 seconds. Their drives have been a total now of 41 seconds and 39 seconds in our open 47 seconds and 39 seconds in our opening quarter. From the 30 yard line, Lesh will roll to his left. He's got room to run, headed to the sideline before he gets knocked out of bounds, but a nice gain. A 
Like he got about seven. Good pick up on first down. Lesh has rushed for 591 yards and five scores. And just doing a, some quick addition, Darren. I think Aiden Pratt has now gone over 3,000 yards throwing the football this season alone. Heck of accomplishment, huh? This will be Lesh. He wants to run to his right this time. He's going to be dragged down, brought down from behind Kraken. by McCracken. Yeah, I don't think he got to the first down stick. Yeah, I guess he did. Heck of an effort by McCracken. Right to the first down marker. I thought his knee was down before he reached the ball ahead, but uh, I'm about a mile high here at uh, Firelands Health Stadium, so we'll go with the officials on the field call. First down. We might see Mr. Lush use his legs on this possession right. a lot more than normal. First down center sponsored by Leland Smith Insurance Services. Hand off inside. This is Butts, and he's got a first down before he's dragged down, but he gets into Cougar territory to the 47 yard line. Another Leland Smith Insurance first down. Steaming on the stop. A Might have been a yard touchdown yeah. saving stop because he'll tell you what, he exploded through the hole. That he did for a fact. Nice job by the offensive line. Butts is the second leading ball carrier behind Logan Lesh, 425 yards and six scores this year. And he will set up on the left hit, hip of Logan Lesh. And this time he picks up about a yard. Is that McCracken again? Uh, no. no, not McCracken. It was, uh, it was Bunce, wasn't yeah. it? First guy, first first guy. That's what I was looking for. I, I saw the three, and it, it was actually 53. Just Jacob first. Nice job from that left defensive end position. So from the 46-yard line, it picked up just a single yard on that possession. Three minutes to go, opening quarter. Bunts this time to the left. Quick out. This is Rowe on the far side at completion, and he's going to be dragged down. Still fighting for yardage, however. Good completion, good run. Yeah, seen a flag pop out. Yeah, let's see what the call is. Appears to be in preliminary indications yeah. a hold. They're marching this one back. At least the guys in black jerseys are. It is a hold. Let's see what Kevin Aller does with this one. Let's see the hold call. And they're going to. With the penalty, they'll be back now into Pirate territory, back to their own 46-yard line, where it will remain second down. They need to get to the Cougar 38-37 for a first down. Quick snap, and what do we got? It was blown dead ahead of the snap. The uh, young man snapped the football before the official gave him permission to do so. Wanted to play. <laughs> Lesh looks to the sideline. They've got that bunch formation again, along with Collier at the top of the screen. Lesh, Lesh will roll. Going to throw a deep, another flag. And that one's going to fall incomplete. Good coverage back there. Is that crew? It appeared to be crew. I think it's crew again. I think you're right. We've got yet another flag. Let's see what this one is. And yet another hold. So back-to-back -back holding calls. Yeah, they went well, from the quad set to, the, to, to three on this side, and they slid somebody in to chip. Fierce. I'm wondering if that's where it came from. Van Wert's done a really good job. The front four. Well, Darren, it was already going to be third. And about 17, does Coach decline this one? Yes, he did. So that pass goes incomplete. So from their own 46-yard line, it becomes third now in 17. So that's set again to the right side with Collier to the top of the screen. 
Les looks to the sideline for his play call. And relays the information to his offensive line. Four down linemen for the Cougars. And he's going to throw the ball over the middle, and it goes incomplete. Nicely defended yeah. there by Steeman. Steeman was coming in from his free safety spot, and the ball flies incomplete. So following a couple of penalties, and one of which was accepted, and then a couple of incomplete passes, Pirates will go into punt formation. That means Venerucci. This will be his second punt of the evening. High snap, he gets it down, and there's his punt. This is a better effort. And it's gonna take a really nice roll. Oh, a dangerous pickup there. How about that though? Saved a few yards. Sure did. It was Crutchfield did that. And Van Wert will take over with 2.12 to go in our opening quarter. Out of town or can't get WSN? WSN is now streaming 24-7 on Roku and on Apple TV. Download our Roku channel and Apple TV app to subscribe. A $100 donation allows you to watch anywhere in the world. Visit app.wsn.tv to sign up. So Van Wert will take over. They are back on their own 17-yard line after a short field. Pratt looks, looks, throws. It's caught on the far side of the field, but he was out of bounds. Yeah, that pass appeared to be attend, attempted by Garrett Gunter. Garrett Gunter came into this night with 53 catches. That led the Van Wert Cougars, 732 yards. He's been in the end zone five times this year, second and 10. And they will go trips left. This is Parker in motion, and this time we're going to get a flag that will go. Motion penalty, what is it? Yep, false start. Yeah. I was just getting ready to say Mr. Pratt likes those one-on-one -on -one situations, doesn't he? He likes to yeah. just get his receiver in a one-on-one -on -one situation and let it play with his arm. Take the ball back to the 12-yard line where it becomes second and 15 now. Well, if nothing else, Darren Van Wert would love to get out of the quarter because uh, they would be punting into the wind. So they would like to pick up at least a first down and get into the second quarter when they will have the wind at their back. Here's Pratt to throw. Guess who's off the edge? Oh, he got him. my goodness. Big Touchdown. Hit. Touchdown. He fumbled the football. That big hit came from Jaden Rao. And what's the, what's the reason ruling in the end zone? It looked like Van Wert got safety. it. Yeah, it's going to be a safety, which is better than seven, but I'll tell you what. Did he blow around the corner? Do you think the Division I coaches are wow. looking at this young man? My goodness gracious. What an upside. He uses his hands so well. and just He is listed at 6'5", 192, mm. and he just flew around the corner, got the sack, and the safety. That makes it 13-2. And Perkins will get the football back in an advantageous position as well. Yeah, Van Wert very fortunate, you know, to only give up two points there because it could have got ugly real quick, and they just scored seven right there and trimmed that thing down. Our scoreboard tonight is presented by Loudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them in Coldwater or in Van Wert or at loudix.com. So are they going to choose to put it on a tee or are they going to punt it? And again, this will be into about an 11 mile per hour wind, uh, whatever they choose to do. Going back deep is Nemitz, who they have kicked the football to twice this evening. And I believe that's Butts back there with him. Can you imagine that kid putting 15, 20 pounds oh on him to play him in an outside linebacker spot? Goodness gracious. Coach Recker is on the field and uh, he's having a discussion with the, with the officiating crew on the far side. And uh, quite honestly, Darren, I'm not sure what coach is discussing. The two points are already on the board, so it's uh, 
It's not about who recovered the football. Yeah, the ball definitely went yeah. into the end zone. It did. That was a it heck of a to. shot there that Pratt took. It's good to see him bounce, get right up and bounce right back up off the turf. Well, you know, Aiden Pratt is listed at 6'4", 205, and there are not a, quarter, a lot of quarterbacks with his skill set who also play defensive end and has so since he was a sophomore. Here's McCracken to kick off. And with that, you can see the Perkins Pirates back it up a bit to around their own 30-yard line. Nemitz and uh, Butts back there. Here's the kick. It's going to sail to Nemitz again on his own 28-yard line. Straight up the middle he goes, and he runs into a pile of people, but not till they have very good field position at right about the 47-yard line. Riker on the stop, number 30 for the Cougars. Actually, they're going to put it on the 48-yard line where this drive will begin. Perkins has turned the ball over on downs, and they have punted twice offensively for a team that averages 35.3 points per game. This time they go three receivers left, and this will be Bunts. Bunts over midfield, picks up about five. See a little better than five, perhaps, depending on where the ball gets spotted. Uh, they're going to bring it back to the 47. It is a five-yard pickup. Crutch fouled on the stop. The three-year letterman for the Cougars. 90 seconds to go in the opening quarter here from Firelands Health Stadium at Perkins High School. Trips left again. This will be Lesh this time, and he runs, and they bounce it out wide where he's going to be brought Great down by Luke by Wessel. Wessel. And he is hurt. Luke Wessel went and played off the blocker, made the tackle, and he is going to go down injured. And while we take care of the injured player, we're going to break. You're watching High School Playoff Football, WSN. Well, you can see Luke Wessel jogging off the field, and we're, hopefully that means he returns. He just made a really nice defensive play on the run by Logan Lesh. Actually lost a yard back to the 48. That sets up third and about six. Yeah, Mark, he made a great point. They're already down one in the secondary. Yeah, Ashton Bear out with a lower body injury that he suffered a week ago in the win over Wasion in their opening playoff victory. So we're at third and six. Lesh, he and Bunce both look into the play call. Looks like we're going to change it as Lesh walks up to the line of scrimmage and gives some instructions to his offensive line. The receivers go two by two this time. Here's Lesh to throw. Looks. He wants to throw it deep, and he's going to chuck it long. He's got a man out here, and really nice coverage out there. They're trying to squeeze the ball to Weston Sturzinger and could not get it to him thanks to the defensive play. Yeah, Garrett Gunner right there running stride for stride with it appeared to be number 20. Yeah, St Sturzinger. Sturzinger, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was stride for stride, and he, you know, he didn't bump him or anything like that. Great defensive play. It is fourth down, and with it exactly a minute to go here in our opening quarter, and with the wind at their back, it looks like Coach Santoro is choosing to punt this one away and try to pin the Cougars back. That was a successful move the last time. Pinning him back deep, got him a safety. Low snap, picks it up, and here's the kick. Headed out of bounds. And Parker lets it go out of bounds, and Van Wert will take over. At the 21-yard line, it appears. So Van Wert, fifth possession of the opening half. And uh, football is right on the 21-yard line with 54 seconds to go. Here's Aiden Pratt. He's got Brylon Parker beside him. 
this will be a Parker run, and he will go down quickly. Somebody got him by the ankles, looked like Mr. Rowe. It does. He is proving to be a wrecking ball defensively. Give him a couple to the 23 as Parker did fall forward, second and eight. He's got a big motor because he goes from one side of the field to the other real quick. You can see he's on the left side of the defensive formation. This time is number eight. <laughs> That's the key word this time. Yeah. This time, yep. That'd account for him on every possession. Play clock getting down to five. Here's the snap. Quick out. Caught on the far side of the field. I think that's Gunter. It is. He appears to be at about the 30. Which will mean he'll be about a yard short on that completion. And that will be the final play of our opening quarter. Yeah, it was a good one. If you're wearing a white jersey tonight, they will take a 13-2 lead at the break. You're watching High School Playoff Football on WOSN. TV44 and WSN are nonprofit organizations supported by viewers like you. Now's a great time to make a donation in any size as a way to say thank you for the sports broadcast. Go to WTLW.com and click donate here. Donations are accepted 24 hours a day. There's a first down run. A little now, quick pitch action right there to Parker, and he fought his way for the two yards necessary to get that first down. The first downs tonight are sponsored by Leland Smith Insurance Services. Your first call for all your insurance needs. Quick pass, that's caught on the far side of the field on first down. That time he found Nate Phillips. Diedrich on the stop. Just picked up about three that time to the 36. Be second and seven. Parker goes in motion. Here's a quick pass out to him. And he is going to be hit and uh, pushed down before he can get to the 40-yard line. Wes Sturzinger on the stop, pushed him out at the boundary. I don't know if you saw that or not. Did you see number eight come yeah, across the line with them long arms? I thought he was going to knock it mm, down. Knock it down or <laughs> just grab it grab and take it. off with it. Third and two. It's third and four. They need to get to the 42. Here's Pratt, and he's going to go down. Brought down in the backfield by big number 66, Austin Yoakum. 6'1", 240 pounder. That'll lose three. And this time, Stephen will head into punt formation with the wind at his back. Yoakum coming into the night with 61 stops. 17th in the CBC in we're tackles. A, we're a quarter into this one, and the wind has not abated in the least. It is still blowing at a pretty steady, and the Weather Channel says 11 miles an hour. It is every bit of that. Tonight. <laughs> yeah, correct. Here's a good low punt. That's going to go into the harms, arms of Collier, and he will go down immediately. Good special teams coverage sure by was. Van Wert. Mr. Pratt. So Perkins will take over. That's what you can do when they put that rule in where you couldn't bust the center in the back of the head, so you can let your quarterback be the snapper with exactly 10 minutes to go here in quarter number two. Ball will be on the 34-yard line for Perkins. This will be their fifth possession of the opening half, and so far the Cougar defense has played very well. Yeah, let's see how Perkins attacks the win this second quarter. Well, they're going to attack it with a Logan Lesh run, and Logan Lesh will pick up a couple, perhaps. He was met in a hole by number 11, Maddox Crutchfeld, along with. We're cracking. Yeah, give him two to the 36. Good job by the linebacker stepping in and filling them holes. Well, on the season, Van Wert has allowed their opponents to rush for, uh, what is it, 114 yards per game. They have been pretty solid defensively there. Here's the quick out pass. This is caught on the far side by Sturzinger. And the Cougars get to him in a hurry. 
You are right, Wes Sturzinger. Ball goes to the, right to the 40 yard line. Parker on the stop for the Cougars. So they need four this time, do the Pirates. Third down. Three receivers left, single receiver right, bunts in the backfield along with Lesh. And we're changing up their coverage. And with that, Coach Jalen Santoro says, we're going to take a timeout. We're going to take a timeout, too, watching high school playoff football, WOSN. First time out of the football game goes to the Perkins Pirates. And that will be with 8.42 to go here in our opening half. They are facing what could be very important for them, third and about four. Having trouble getting things going offensively. Well, they haven't been in that position all year. In pregame, we talked about it. they put 248 points on the board in the first two quarters, and they're they're right now sitting on two. Yeah, we got and movement I think they on got the a false side. start. Yep. I think West uh, Weston Sturgeon got a little bit anxious to get off the line of scrimmage, and that will take them back. Yeah, those hurt because you just took a penalty, or not a penalty, but a timeout to address a play with your team and to come out and get that false start. That just backs you back up an additional five yards. It makes it third and nine now. They need to get to the four, their own 44-yard line. Trips left this time. Lesh throws it out. It's going to be caught out here and tackled. Oh, oh there's a fumble. Oh, he's going to call it incomplete. How about the big hit that time oh, by Reese Crew? As Crew had a good first half. Oh. Yeah, he laid the wood to him yeah, right that, there, he didn't he? He did, and the ball popped loose. The ruling was incomplete. Fortunate for Perkins, that well could have been viewed as a fumble. But obviously did not secure it long enough, and into the punt formation yet again is Drake Venerucci. Yeah, that's a big stop there for Van Wert. They're going to get the football in decent field position, you would think, after this punt. Nice catch there and by there that young is. man. Yeah. Line drive punt. That goes right into the hands of Parker, and he skips up the sidelines. And Van Wert will have a possession in pretty good field position. 8.28 to go here in the second quarter. Appeared to be pushed out of bounds by Joey Dietrich. Are you looking for a perfect gift for the out-of-town sports fans? WSN can now be streamed anywhere in the world, online, on Roku or Apple TV for a $100 annual donation. Give the gift of hometown sports for the holidays. Sign up at app.osu.tv or by downloading our Roku and Apple TV apps. Cougars on their own 43-yard line. I'm curious if they just turn Aiden loose with his arm here. And they turn him loose with his legs this time, and he dances around, and finally is going to run into contact at about the 45-yard line. So that will be just a couple-yard pickup on first down for Aiden. Well, Darren, Yoke I, him on the stop. I thought we were going to have a shootout, and the way the opening quarter started, it appeared to be that way, but mm -hmm. both defenses started to settle in. There's Pratt looking to the sideline. And he is relaying information to his offensive line. He's doing so with Bradham Parker on his right hip. Parker now goes in motion. Look, Pratt's going to throw it deep. He's got and him. And he's got he's him. He's got him. Sure wow, does. He put the ball right on the arms of Nate Phillips, who made a great catch. Yeah, Aiden is just sitting back there waiting on the one-on-one -on -one matchups. What and he's throwing the ball. Long and on the money. He did put that one right on the money. That is what we got here, 44 and 5, 49 yards. Here's a run up the middle. See where the football gets put down. That was Parker on the carry that time. They're doing the hurry up right here. Ball's on about the four-yard line. Parker again. Oh, right behind wow. the big offensive lineman. That he think. did, down to the one-yard line. Nimitz on the stop. And they Touchdown are right back to the tackle. line of scrimmage they go. Parker or Pratt, who carries it? 
And we get offside call against Perkins, which will be a minor penalty, yeah, but will help a little bit. Now, Pratt has rushed for 10 touchdowns on the ground this year. Parker has 17 rushing touchdowns. So you've got a couple of options there behind this offensive line. Logan Dotson, Jackson Jones, Devin Story, Caleb Geething, Caleb Bledsoe. See if they can carve a spot there. This is McCracken was in motion. It was, and nice he didn't get there. there, did he? Sure did. Really nice defensive stop that time. Even after the penalty in the short yardage, it'll be fourth down. Somebody snuck in there. At about the one-yard line now. McCracken has had a good year kicking the football, and we're going to get an injury. It looks like is that 55. It is Jackson Jones, 240-pound senior lineman, checked out. Looks like he was holding an arm. Well, and that's big also because he's he's two-way. He plays on the defensive front four also. And he does. The play clock is running down, and there is a Van Wert timeout. 6.15 to go. Timeout. You're watching high school playoff football on WOSN. And we're Cougars trying to score. If they do, we'll have a Lee Kinsel and Sales Service Extra Point. Lee Kinsel on Irving Road in Van Wert. Take a look at our pre-owned specials at LeeKinsel.com. You know, this play is big for both ball clubs. It is. You know, Perkins can get a stop here. You know, obviously playing on their home field. Van Wert can get, it, get one on the road. And it's it looks like uh, Coach Recker says we're going to go for this one. It is fourth and one. Pratt. Parker in the backfield. Two receivers each way. Here's Crutchfield in motion. Pitch to Parker, and he's not going to get there. Get they there, get him. He? Lost about four yards on that possession. That they did. Perkins swarms to him, and he's going to be knocked down at about the four-yard line. So he actually lost three with 6.09 to go. Hopper Zadek on the stop there, along with a lot of black and white there. And, Big possession. Uh, he appeared to lose about oh, two on that quick pitch. I think it was a good gamble by Coach. There's, there's left in the football. Obviously, he wanted to score, but you left them 97 yards to go going into the wind, and your defense has played very sure. well. You're up 11. I think that was a really good move by Coach. Yep, absolutely. But a better defensive play by the guys wearing black well, and white. Big for them. Big it for was. them. Logan Lesh in the backfield. He, along with Isaac Bunce. Lesh, did they get him? Oh, they might have got a safety. Did they get him? It's going to be close. And the linesman from our side They're runs in and no. says he just got out. Wow. Give a dollar to see a replay. Oh, my. <laughs> well, watch it on uh, when we get home tonight. How about that? That football is barely outside the white line. Okay, we'll text later on tonight and uh, talk we, about it. We can do that for a fact. I didn't see who it was. Did you happen? Was it Ferris? I did not. Well, somebody was moving in a real big hurry. In the end zone this time to receive this snap. Lesh and Bunts in the backfield. You know, when you're in shotgun, you're already mm -hmm. seven yards deep in the end zone. Again, unfamiliar territory for. Quick pass out. Caught by Collier. Perkins. And he's going to get knocked out of bounds. Good play by Kruv. And, we yeah, hit. we did. Late hit. Carson Smith, a little bit too over aggressive. Well, Kruv did a good job of playing him initially, and I thought Smith had a good shot at him. But then when, when he got out of bounds, he was not able to let up. Yeah, that's when the it contact is. came. Yep. So that will be a Leland Smith insurance first down, and it will get them out of some serious trouble. Football's going all the way out to the 30-yard line. I think Mr. Twenty five is a little yeah. bit better now, doesn't he? All the way out to the 25-yard line. And they will start first down. I'm sure he does. Bunts on the handoff. Good job and by Pratt. Nowhere to go. Yep. Pratt's there. Several, first several, was yeah. there. Logan Dotson was there. They had that one stuffed. Nice job by the front four, Van Wert stunting right there to the football. Give him a yard that time to the 26. Second at about nine. 
Cougars would like to get a stop with a punt into the wind and have one more opportunity here. Here's a quick out. Rowe on the far side, and he's going to get to the 30 and over the 30. Good run for him after the catch. Parker on the stop along with Wessel. Good to see Wessel back in the game, isn't it? Yes, it is. Steeman also on the stop, a host of Cougars. So the football goes to the, where are we at here, Darren? 30. It looks about about the 33. Okay, I got that pillar in my way right now. Yeah, it's let's, 33. Let's see if we can make this work. Yeah, the scoreboard says 33. We'll go with that. It is second or third down. They need to get to the 35 for a first. Yeah, this is a big play for Perkins. You don't want to be put in a fourth down situation. And I think they're, yes, they are. They're going to take a timeout. Coach Jalen Santoro understands the importance of this play. He's taking a timeout. Our timeout also, you're watching High School Playoff Football, WSN. The free WSN Scores app is the easiest way to follow local high school sports. No one covers more schools, more sports, and more scores than WSN. You can search WSN in the App Store or Android Play Store. Guess what everybody does in four minutes, Darren? They go right to the WSN app and check all the halftime scores you around. You. Every press box we're in this fall, that's what happens. A lot of very successful teams in Northwest Ohio in a variety of sports. Here is a very important third and two. Lesh looks to the sideline with 10 on the play clock. Chess match. Cougars with four down linemen. Lesh looks, has to tuck it. And he's going to scramble. Pratt made him pump it, and here's the throw. And, oh, what a row went up and made a catch. He was pretty well defended by Parker and still went up and grabbed it. Here to be caught, brought down there by Carson Smith. What a great job by Lesh, though. Pratt tried to disrupt him, jumped as a defensive lineman's told to do, and Lesh kept his composure and made a nice pitch and catch there with Mr. Rao. 20-yard pickup for a Lee Kinsel sales and service or Alina Smith Insurance first down, excuse me. That was a quick out to Collier. It was. Quick out to Collier. My apologies to well, Mr. Rowe. I called him Rao. Glad you caught that. I had to post him away. I didn't get to see that throw. There's another first down. Alina yeah, it was Smith a quick Insurance. out to Collier here on the left side. Nice job blocking there by Perkins. 11-yard pickup. It's a first down. Lesh to throw again. Fakes, throws. That's caught. This time he finds Caden Nixon. You can see the confidence yeah, level yeah, of Perkins starting to build. When he faked Pratt that time and got the completion, his next two passes have been right on the money and with a lot of zip to him. To the 23-yard line, yet another first down. Best drive of the night, Perkins. Snap throw, row. Row inside the 20 before he gets pushed out of bounds. Appeared to be crew on the stop along with number 23, McCracken. Six completions in a row on this drive for Logan Lesh. Yeah, this could certainly turn into a 99-yard drive, right? Didn't they start yeah, it was one? to the uh, football's on the 17. There's another completion. Makes the first guy miss, but did not get to the 15. Good job by Carson Smith holding him up for his teammates to come in and push him out of bounds. This will be the 10th play of the drive coming up right here from about the 15-yard line, and it is third and two again. Yeah, I think Perkins is just content to take the little dunk passes right here and see what they can get after the catch. Bunch will be in the backfield along with Lesh. The three receivers to the right, Collier to the left. Not a lot of room to the short side of the field. <laughs> Look at Rose pointing, throw it to me. <laughs> Here's Absolutely. a quick pass. This is caught and pushed out of bounds as Collier, but not until he got a first down. Yeah, crew a little bit too deep on that defensive assignment right there, and they just went to a quick pitch and catch. The football is right on the 10-yard line, and so they cannot get a first down. 11th play of the drive that began almost four minutes ago from their own three-yard line is where it began. Here's Lesh to throw, looks to the end zone, throw, caught, dive, did he get in? He's gonna be close. He got in. Collier dives through the end zone, through a tackle and scores. Yeah, Crew tried to keep him out of the end zone, but it was just such a mismatch. 
height-wise that he just extended and got that big body and those long arms across the goal line in the plane. On the 11th play of a drive that went 97 yards. They're going to go for two. And maybe not. Now they're going to make the change, aren't they? Logan Lesh was out there trying to get his guys to go for two. He came off the, the field. Well, I don't see the kicker 13 out eight. there. Yeah, they are going to go for two. Oh, they're going to go Wildcat. That's mm -hmm. why. This is Bunce. He's going to run right, and he's going to be brought oh, down by Pratt, Pratt, and he didn't get there. Came from that far or this weak side over here and ran him down. Nice job by the senior. The score will stay 13 for Van Wert, 8 for Perkins, 2.31 to go in half. You're watching high school playoff football on WSN. The Sandusky Perkins Pirates go 97 yards. They did so in the three minutes and 32 seconds. They took 11 plays to do so. They scored on a touchdown pass from Lesh to Braylon Collier, and that has made the lead 13 to eight, Van Wert. And with 2.31 to go, Perkins on the board now offensively after scoring on a safety early. And it's gonna bounce around and bounce around and Crew. He eventually gets picked up by Crew, and Crew's in a lot of trouble. You can see about five black shirts right there. On the bottom of the pile was Wyatt Nemitz, and uh, we're on our press box booth, Darren is on, we got a flag down, on the uh, Perkins sideline, and uh, that's, shall we say the Perkins crowd is excited uh, right now? Yes, yep, Van Wert had them on their hands, and. Well, uh, now, now it's a ball game. Well, Van Wert had a key penalty, and what are we going to get here? Personal foul, Van Wert. Oh, one on each way. Okay. All right. Gruden also on the stop for Perkins there. So momentum now going with the uh, team wearing black jerseys. Now I think they are going to. Okay. Yeah. He, he missed. They, he missed signaled it, didn't That was the problem. And so we thought it was offsetting. It was not. He meant to signal against Perkins. And so Van Wert will move all the way out to their own 31-yard line. That's advantageous for them. I'm wondering if he was looking at the possible you know, body slam of the ball carrier right there. Inside pass. Parker will fall forward and pick up about four to the 35-yard line. Good job by Sam Sturzinger. Van Wert would love to score here or uh, yeah, certainly can maintain the ball for the rest of the half. Perkins will get the football to open up quarter number three. Van Wert would love to do something right here to snatch the momentum back before halftime. Pratt's going to throw it deep and just overshot his man. Is that Crutchfield? It's it was. Crutchfield, yep. Well defended by Young. Oh, um, there's a flag. Well, there's a flag down. I think it was well before the, the, okay. well, what we were looking at. Hold. Yeah. That, the flag is way back up at the 38-yard line. Let's see if it's a well, hold. Well, you know what? The one official is pointing at the Cougars. You don't think that Crutchfield pushed off, perhaps. I don't know. Let's see what the call is. Let's, let's just wait and do that and be fair to the officiating in this question, in this situation. There's no admission fee to watch this game, but there is a cost for us to broadcast. Say thanks to viewer support TV44 by sending them a financial gift. TV44 relies on the donations of viewers to enable airing of this game and others locally produced programs. Donate now at WTLW.com. Offsetting. Offsetting. Pen a penalty appeared to be preliminary well, indication was holding on both ball clubs. So and, I'm wondering if it wasn't well, Van Wert at the on the line. It was, region. yes. And I think that's what happened. Uh, so we're going to replay down number two, which makes it second and the seven. Pratt will roll left. Pressured, and down he goes. Excellent pressure there Well, number seven. Zach Oprazadik, excuse me. Well, we're going to take it back to the 31-yard line, which is where this possession began. So it'll be third and 10. Perkins has used two timeouts in this half. And the, play, the clock is approaching a minute to go. I have a feeling Coach Rector is going to let this one run all the way down. No, perhaps not. He's signaling to Coach 
into Pratt. Three to the right, two to the left. Here's Pratt. Blitz coming off the edge. And Pratt makes the first guy miss and gets positive yardage, but not much. Appeared to be Mr. Yoakum had him by the jersey, just slowed him up enough for his teammates to get to him. With 56 seconds to go in the opening half, Perkins takes a timeout. And they are obviously hoping to do something with the punt coming up here from Gage Steeman. Yeah, do you set up the return or do you set up a punt block situation? That would well, be got curious. A, you've got a hot quarterback and some very talented receivers, but likewise you have no timeouts left. So let's see how Coach Jalen Santoro chooses to play this. Darren, I went down on the field. I talked to Coach Santoro for about 30 seconds, and I said, would you know a lady named Vera Lee or a guy named Randy? And he said, yeah, it's my grandparents. I said, she cut my hair back in the 70s. Wow. What does that say about our age? <laughs> you know? yeah, don't remind me about that, huh? <laughs> but that's Be awesome. Be Bellevue High School graduate here at uh, Perkins. Here's Steeman to punt. And looking to see who's deep. Looks like Sturzinger is deep. Really athletic and, uh, family at their day in Bellevue. Oh, my. That is absolutely true. Here's the punt. And Sturzinger's going to let it hit. And it's going to take a bit of a cougar bounce. That's a good thing for them. That's and a 23-yard line, partner. With 45 seconds to go, no timeouts. They do have a field goal kicker who's made seven this year, but he would be kicking into the wind, so they need to do some serious yardage pickup right here. And the football is on the 22-yard line, as Darren said. 13-8 Cougars. Three receivers to the left. Bunce is in the backfield. Collier at the top of your screen. There's Lesh to throw. Plenty of time. Now he's going to tuck it and run. Nope. Yes, he does. And he's going to skate out of bounds on the far side. Yeah, he had his eye on guess who. Yeah. Good job by Van Wert rolling over the top there and doubling him. He got five out to the 27-yard line before being chased out of bounds, which stops the clock with 37 to go here. Trips left again, same formation. Play clock approaching 10 as Les looks at the wristband with all the plays on it. Here's Les, quick out, caught out here, Collier. Collier with room to run before he gets pushed out of bounds by Carson Smith. It's a Leland Smith insurance first down to the, where are we at, 38? Uh, 38, yep. Okay. Good job by Carson Smith right there, you know, backing off on that boundary right there, lifting his hands up. Trips to the left, not much room to work over there. That's the short side of the field. Lesh to throw. Oh, he took And a he big threw hit. it a long way and tried to get it to Collier and could not. Back there with him. Guess who? Crew. Boy, he had a nice first half. Yeah, I was just watching quarterback defensive end on quarterback, and he took a big hit right there by Pratt. Mr. Lesh popped right up. Good to see. Good clean football by both players. That play took just six seconds, so it will be second down and 10 now from their own 38. Coach Santoro giving a play call. They're going to go to that four-man formation to the left this time. Less to throw. Plenty of time. And here's a short pass. Oh, almost picked off. McCracken? Yeah, McCracken had an opportunity to it, couldn't haul it in. Would have been a difficult catch, but one he would have liked to have had, third down. Yeah, Lush sort of sidearmed that one, but McCracken made a great play right there, reading the quarterback's eyes, getting his hands on it, knocking that ball down. 18 seconds to go, third down.
Lesh to throw again. Here's Pratt's loose. Pratt dove at his feet. And he's going to head for the sideline with McCracken chasing him. He did not get to the first down. He got to about to 45, and I think he needed to get to about to 48. That would be correct. They're going to be three yards short on fourth down. And the clock is now down at nine, and it looks like punt time. That means that the putter, which is uh, Fenerucci, and the Cougars come. Makes you wonder if they're yeah. going to send everybody at him. And they do. Here they come. And he gets it off. And it's going to be a line drive that will bounce past Parker and head to the end zone. Does it get all the way there? It rolled into the end zone with no time on the clock. Good job by Parker just letting it go and let the clock the clock come to an end of the opening half. Well, we were expecting a shootout. We didn't get a shootout, but we got a close game. It's Van Wert 13. It's Perkins 8 at the half. You're watching high school playoff football, WOSN. We're back at Sandusky Perkins High School, Fireland's Health Stadium. It is 13 for Van Wert. It is 8 for Perkins at halftime. Mark Shine and Darren Gilbert. Well, Darren, I, you know, we came into this expecting a shootout, and we've got uh, two touchdowns by one team, a touchdown by the other team, and a safety. Well, you know, Van Wert started out really, really well and jumped on them, you know, at, at 13 to nothing and uh, had Perkins on their heels but the makings of a good football team, and they, didn't, they showed no panic, and we talked about that because they have not been in that position before, and they just hung in there and kept battling and took a drive 99 yards and converted it and tried to go for the two to make it a three-point ball game. But, you know, they got to be pleased going in at halftime to have the discussion down at 13 uh, to 8 because it very easily, you know, could be 20 to 2 or 20 to nothing because Van Wert got stopped there on a huge fourth and one possession and uh, the momentum seemed to change a little bit right there and I think if you're Van Wert, you're glad the half came and uh, you can regroup with your football team. Now they're, we're going to see what Van Wert does defensively because Perkins is going to get the football. Let's go through the scoring plays in the opening half. Van Wert took the opening kickoff. They then went 62 yards in four plays. It took them just 47 seconds to do so. It was a touchdown pass from Pratt to Crutchfield on that particular score. After a couple punts and a change of possession, then they went uh, 39 yards after a short punt. Four plays, 39 seconds off the clock. That was a touchdown pass from Pratt to Connor Campbell. At that point, it was 13 to nothing, and then we got a sack. Jade Rowe came around the corner, knocked the ball loose. His team recovered, uh, or they weren't recovered the football, but tackled in the end zone. That made it 13 to two. And then late in the half on an 11-play drive that took three minutes and 22 seconds, Perkins went 97 yards, and they scored on that 11-play drive. That made it 13-8. to eight. It was a touchdown pass to Collier that put that ahead. And as you said, Darren, it's got 20, minutes to, 20 seconds to go before kickoff. This opening drive could be very, very important in the grand scheme of things. Sure it is. You know, is there such thing as a law firm of less and row? Because I'll tell you what. <laughs> Those two dynamic athletes, you know, brought Perkins back into this position of being down 13 to eight, along with, you know, their defensive prowess there in the second quarter. Our scoreboard is presented by Loudix Jewelry, your family owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them in Coldwater or Van Wert or online at loudix.com. Van Wert had the opening kickoff. This time it will be Perkins with the opening kickoff. And the breeze has continued. If anything, it's a little bit stronger than it was, and it will be behind the Cougars here in this quarter. Deep is Nemitz, and also on the far side of the field, that's Isaac Butts. And as has every other kickoff, it will go to Nemitz, and he picks up his own 15-yard line with a head of steam, bounces off the first guy, and then will be tackled up near the 30-yard line where Logan Lesh and company will begin half number two. Here to be Colin Haggerty on the stop for the Cougars, along with number 28, Reese Crew, who we've called yeah, numerous he's times a, tonight. He's had a really good football game this evening. The football will be on the 29-yard line. 
There's that bunch formation to the left of Logan Lesh. See Van Wert. Parker's going right up to yeah, the line of scrimmage now, isn't he? He's going to try to jam that first set of blockers. Here's the first pass out. Catch by Rowe. And that will be a good completion. He got a good block that time from uh, Drake Venerucci to spring him. Crew and Smith on the stop. Appears to be at the 40-yard line. That it is, 11-yard pickup. That is a Leland Smith insurance first down. And that bunch formation will go to the right side this time. Yeah, Parker tried to get through that first interior blocks, and they did a really good job spring and row for that 11-yard pickup. Well, he is allowed to block, correct, as long as the pass is caught behind the line of scrimmage? That's, that's my understanding, That's how yes. the rule goes, and that's exactly what he did that time. A good block. Here's Lesh to throw again. Passes out. This is caught. And up the sideline breaks the first guy, misses Collier. And he eventually is going to go down, but deep into Cougar territory. Yeah, nice route. A little up and out there. Nice catch by Collier. Plus the yak right there, broke away from the initial tackle. Run down by Smith, it appears to be at about the 32. That it is, 28 yard pickup, catch and run. Lesh will run it himself this time. He will go down in the backfield, Pratt. Pratt got him, yep. Nice play by that young man, shedding the block from that left tackle position and getting him by the ankles. Loss of the yard, back to the 33 yard line. I'm not so sure if Pratt doesn't get him, if he doesn't have a little open field there, maybe to get eight, 10 yards. Logan Lesh, just under 600 yards rushing in the first 11 games and five touchdowns. As uh, many of the quarterbacks we see this year, Darren, they're dual threat people that we put back there now. Like that RPO stuff, don't they? That run pass option and. As everybody checks their wrist as the play clock is at five. Lesh to throw. And wants to throw it deep. He's got Collier out here with Crew, and he dove and he caught it. I'm looking, there's the signal. Catching the end zone, Braylon Collier. Boy, what a heck of an effort by the young man. Because I'll tell you, Crew give all he could do and just couldn't get his fingertips on the football. Collier appears to be down, but I'm, I'm not so sure. Maybe he got the wind knocked out of him. That was an incredible catch. He just dove and was able to secure that one. Well, Lesh threw it to a position where the defender was not going to get his hands on it. And if uh, Collier doesn't catch it, that pylon and the out of bounds is definitely going to be in play there. Well, we have sent multiple medical people to Collier. We're going to take a break while they tend with him. You're watching High School Playoff Football on WOSN. We're back at Perkins High School. Braylon Collier got up. Multiple people dealing with him. He's walking off to the sideline. He's been told in the press box he has had shoulder issues this year. He just made a tremendous catch. And with that, his team is taking a one-point lead. What a pending tough the PAT. Kid. How about that? We'll hope he gets back. This is a Lee Kinsel Sales and Service Extra Point. Lee Kinsel on West Irvin Road in Van Wert. Take a look at our pre-owned vehicle specials at LeeKinsel.com. Oh, now I know why he's got seven field goals. No huh? kidding. That's why they put that net up there. That ball would have been like now over in Margareta or somewhere, yeah. Perkins comes out, scores, 71 plays, 71 yards, four plays, 157, 151 went off the clock. And they will take a 15 to 13 lead. And now, if this becomes a tennis match, Darren, what do the Van Wert Cougars do coming out of this? Yeah, this is the one where they've got to regroup. They're on the road. You know, they're facing adversity that they haven't faced this first half of tonight's contest, and now they're playing from behind. Let's see what they've got up their sleeve. You know, you know they're not going to they're not going to back down, but they're going to have to execute and, and get some sustained drives here, Mark. But you know what? Because Uncle Momentum has changed right now. That it has. This will be Van Wert's opening possession of half number two. In the opening half, they scored on two of their first three possessions and were shut out after that. So, see what they come up with here after the halftime adjustments. Perkins did exactly what Van Wert did to them in that first 
possession of the game. Went right down the field and scored. Slays kick. And tripped up as he got over the 25-yard line. It's Phillips. And let's see what uh, Van Wert does coming out of the halftime break. Here to be Rose Kelly tripping him up. And where are we putting the football down at? Looks like we're going to put it on the 27-yard line. First down for Aiden Pratt and crew. He's got two receivers to his left. He's got Brian Parker on his right hip. And Pratt will run right. And he's going to get pushed out of bounds. That was Rose work right there. My goodness, he just got his hands up there and shedded that block by Critchfield and just pushed a whole outside line right out of bounds. And Aiden had nowhere to go with it. Move the football ahead a yard to the 28 where it will be second and nine. Pratt, quick throw, caught, and a tackle before they could get to the 35-yard line. The catch was made by Connor Campbell. Sturzinger on the stop, West Sturzinger. Stopped it at the 34-yard line. This will be third and three. And Pratt will run up the middle, and he's going to dive and not get there. He will go down at about the 35, perhaps the 36-yard line. It's going to be a yard or two short. Adam Davis on the stop. Yeah, just over the 35-yard line. Big play by Davis. Facing fourth and a lengthy one. Coach Record decides to punt it away. This will be Gage Stevens' punt. Guess who's back to receive Yeah, it. I was going to say that. I was looking to see if Collier was come back in the game, and he has. He is the lone safety back. Yeah, it's quite apparent, like you said, he's played with the injury all year. Well, or it was what you first thought, that it was uh, not the wind knocked out of him. And he is able to get back in the football game, but. 24 yard line. Having scored on their opening possession of the half, Perkins gets the football back with 8.45 to go. The Cougars had the football for about a minute and a half. And as you said, Darren, right to the 24-yard line goes the football. 15-13, Perkins. And let's see if Cougar defense can step up. Logan Lesh changing the play, relaying information to everybody as the play clock hits eight. Lesh, quick out, row. And that time he's brought down from behind by McCracken for a short gain. You know, Parker didn't get credit for the tackle, but he did a good job blowing up the play to get McCracken there to get the stop. Three yard pickup to the 27 yard line, third and, or second and seven. There's Lesh again. See everybody checking the wristbands in the play clock. Under eight. Looks, fakes once, and now he's going to roll to his right and throws it out of bounds. Nice job defensively there by Van Wert. They went to almost like a zone set right there, and Pratt jumped it like they were going to throw the screen pass and took away Lesh's options there and he had no choice but to throw it out of bounds. Third and seven, they need to get to the 34 yard line for a first down. Collier's the single receiver it's at the bottom of your screen. If you're Van Ward, you yeah. gotta like it, and, you know, putting Perkins in a long situation here on third down. Now Collier gets three of his buddies over here with him. Play clock at four, here's the play. Look, look, gunned over the middle, it's caught by Rowe. And he will get over the 40-yard line, and that will be a Lee Kinsel first down. Pushed out of bounds by Smith and crew. Nice pitch and catch. Rowe finding the open seam in there and just 
Ran down there, planted himself in the open area. Nice throw. Needed seven and got 14 to make it a first down. Open Lesh, 6'190 pound, a junior quarterback. Offensive player of the year in the Sandusky Bay Lake Conference. He might have fallen forward through Pratt's tackle for a yard. Pratt and uh, first. Yep, first on the stop. 42-yard line, second and nine. What a nice luxury to have. Six foot five defensive end, six foot five. Kid you can put in the slot. About like Pratt, six five quarterback, six five defensive end. There's Bunce on the right side of Lesh. As three receivers go to the right side. Collier's at the bottom of your screen. Once again, they've used a lot of the play clock. Here's Lesh. Runs up the middle, bounces it. Good job yeah, by Pratt staying absolutely. at home. Absolutely. He wanted to get outside, and Pratt was right there on the contain. Good job staying at home. Him and Haggerty. You know, I was just getting ready to say, you know, Van Wert's in a situation right now. Just, just, just play Ben. Don't break defense right here. You know, put him in the third and six, third and seven situation, and see if you can't get a stop. It is third and seven here. The receivers go two by two. We are halfway through quarter number three. Lesh to throw, out, caught Collier, knocked out of bounds, but not, until, yeah, but not until he picked up another Lee Kinsel first down. That will be to the 44-yard line. Boy, Perkins does a really good job running their routes. It's pure and it's, it's really executed very well. Nice fundamentals. They've been a little bit more deliberate on this drive. The play clock has frequently been down around five or six before it snapped. It's almost like they have a calmness now in their offense. It's uh, a good way to phrase it, Darren. Here's Bunts. And he will get inside at the 39 for a five-yard pickup. Big run by that young man. Good first down play for the Pirates as they pick up five. Fjurst and Haggerty on the stop for the Cougars. Been a time possession type drive for them as this will be play number eight coming up on this drive. Their 11 play drive got them their initial touchdown today. Same formation. That's saying let's hurry it up. There's that play clock at four again. Bunts again, and he will dive forward. He will be short of the first down. Pratt with the solo stop. Got him by the ankles. It will be right about the 36-yard line, although we had a flag on that play that I missed, Darren. Yeah, I didn't see it either, partner. It was thrown by the linesman on the opposite side of the field from us. So that penalty will march them back and uh, right back to the 44, and that will make it second and 10. There's our quad set over here near us. High snap, quick out. Oh, right about yeah, got it, proud, didn't he? About got it. Rowe did get it, but picked up just three. to the 41 yard line where it'll be third down. Actually, it's just to the 42 yard line. Critchfield and McCracken on the stop for the Cougars. So they're gonna need about eight here in what is probably four down territory. Yeah, he couldn't have missed that football by much, Mark. <laughs> he did not, did he? Just four minutes to go. Each team has had uh, initial possession. Perkins scored on theirs in the third quarter. This is Perkins' second possession of the half. Here's Pratt. Oh, Chasing he got him. him. Ball's loose. Sure did. And what happened? 
they recover it inbounds or out? It is out of bounds. What a swim move by Pratt around the, yeah, actually inside oh. the defensive tackle. So now we have the head official, Kevin Aller, threw a flag right at midfield. Oh, he's, he's, he's calling, calling an intentional, intentional grounding. grounding. Goodness. And from our viewpoint, it looked like the ball was stripped by Pratt. Well, that's that penalty from the 50 takes it back to the 45. And also results in it becoming fourth down. But Pratt, you know, he really did, did a good know. job, you know, using that inside move there and he had a good defensive series there. Oh, real good, because they're only bringing three against those five interior linemen. Good job by that young man. Here's Venerucci to punt. Low snap, and he gets it away. Nice kick. And it is. Critchfield bobbles it, picks it up. Trying to outrun people. He's got the edge now. Cuts back inside. That ends up being a pretty good run for Maddox Critchfield. Sure did. Nice block by Wessel also on the far boundary to spring him a little bit to get an extra eight or ten yards. So Van Wert with 340 to go here in the quarter will take over. You can check out our WSN website, WSN.tv, for scores and standings for more sports and more teams than anyone in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more at WOSN.tv. Here's Van Wert from their own 22-yard line. Pratt throws, caught Crutchfield on the far side of the field with a short gain. Sturzinger, Wes pushing him out on the boundary. Well, just to the 25 yard line, it's just a three yard pickup. Positive yardage on the opening play. That's the key word there, partner, positive yardage. That's what Van Wert needs. Parker's gonna try to left end. Parker cuts it back inside. Parker's got some room. He has a First down, sponsored by Leland Smith Insurance. My goodness, what a kick-out block there. I'm trying to see who that was. It appeared to be Devin Story. Just absolutely took that defensive end and pushed him away, allowing him to run right off his backside. Another quick out, Crutchfield. This one goes to the 42, I believe. 41, we'll call it a four-yard pickup. And we'll go to second and six. Partner, something tells me it's going to be a matter of time before Aiden decides to throw one deep. Pratt keeps it himself. He is up near the first down. Young on the stop. Appeared he got enough for the first well, down. If not, for he's a close. Signal. He is right there. Yep, there they called it. Leland Smith insurances first down. This one to the 47. Cooker's picked up two drives on this, or two first downs on this drive. Pratt is going to throw it deep. He's got Crutchfield out here, and he had to throw that one with a guy in his face, Darren. There was a lot of contact yeah. there down the middle of the field between him and Young fighting for a position, and Pratt did throw it in a position, though, that it couldn't be intercepted. That was that shot downfield you were looking at. That mm -hmm. goes to second and ten. The pressure up the middle. I don't think Pratt was there. wanted to throw that quite the way he wanted to with the pressure up the middle. Here is second and ten. Pratt will run left. Got Parker in front of him as a lead blocker. That's a good run for Pratt. He goes over top of people. My goodness, those offensive linemen, they're just pulling and blocking, and there comes two well, flags. Yep. Got two injuries on the field. Well, we had a couple guys going at it, too, and that's why the flags were everywhere. The ball was actually run down to the 46-yard line, which is going to make it third and three. But let's see how the penalty gets things sorted out right here. Injured Perkins player appears to be Austin Yoakum. He's coming off on his side foul, gingerly. Cougars. So the football on the run by Pratt had gone down to the 46-yard line. 
then we're going to get the dead ball personal foul. You know, something tells me it was an extracurricular activity right there at the end of the play that warranted not only one flag but two. And there's another flag. I'm going to bet that one goes against the Van Wert coaching staff. They were unhappy with the call. They think that something wearing a black shirt precipitated it. Of course, their guy got caught in the response. Oh, it's a sideline penalty. That's all. That, that's. A, I thought perhaps it was now, going to be something that, more than that. Now, is that a warning mark? Yeah. Okay. That looked like a sideline warning violation. But the football is all the way back to the 39-yard line, and they need to get to the 43 of Perkins for a first down. It is third and about 18. Yeah, this is where they got to maintain their composure, play within themselves and the system. Here's Pratt. Pressure up the middle, and he's going to go down. No, nope, he escaped it. He ducked through it and got it. Pratt's on the run up near midfield. He's got knocked down, however. Good tackle that right there by Weston Sturzenzinger. How'd he get out of that one? Well, guess who it was? Rowe. Yes, it was. Yeah. He got to the 48-yard line, so he picked up about nine after it looks like he was going to go down in the backfield, but it is fourth down. So the, rather than uh, they, they rather lose about 20 yards in punt, he got up the. Well, both ball clubs yeah. in their last series, one with an intentional grounding and one with a personal foul. You know, those yards mounted up where they couldn't get any first down opportunities and keep their drives going. They're steaming the punt on fourth and nine. Good punt. Collier waves a fair catch sign and will snag it at his own 20. Both fan work possessions here in the third quarter have ended in punts. And with 1.39 to go from their own 20-yard line, the Pirates will get the football back. Here is Bunts in the backfield along with quarterback Logan Lesh. Bunts is just a sophomore at 5'9", 180. Lesh will run. A little bit of yardage for him on first down as he gets up to the 25. McCracken on the stop. Might have got over the 25 to the 26. We'll give him six on first down and make it second and four. Reichert also helping for the Cougars. There's Lesh alone in the backfield this time. Flesh quick out. Rowe with the catch, and right there is Parker and his sure buddies. Sure did. Beat the block that time. And the loss goes back to about the 23. We'll call it a loss of three, and that will make it third and seven. Yeah, that's all That's all heart and effort right there. That's re relentless effort because he's been taking on them blocks all night, and that one he got, got just enough of Rowe to slow him down. Good job there by Parker. Third and seven. They do need to run a play before we get to the end of the quarter. And there's the play clock under five at three. And Lesh will roll, wants to throw back, being chased. Oh, and gonna get him again, away. aren't they? Yeah, is there I'm looking for a receiver. And they're going to discuss this one. Yeah, there was no the body yeah. in the vicinity. Mr. Pratt was bearing down on him again. He threw the football over one of his linemen's head. Other than that, there was nobody over there. And so this will also be an intentional grounding loss of down. And the Cougars have held, and with two seconds to go, they forced them to punt into the wind. Yeah, the closest player to that or person to that was the official. 
who has no eligibility left, so even if he caught it, it wouldn't have done him any good. You know, this punt's going to come just right around the end zone, and you know, we know what you know Perkins' punting situation is in the yards per attempt. Let's see what Van Wert does here. Well, they're inside of midfield, and Venerucci will punt from the Pirate A in his own end zone. Low snap. Oh, he bobbled it. Look boy. out. Cougars There's jump on points. top of it. It's a safety, and we are tied at 15. And that's been a problem all night. He's done a really good job being able to lift that football off the turf. And what a bad time if you're Perkins to have one bobbled. The final play of quarter number three results in a safety. We will be tied at 15. Now, do we have to have an untimed down, Darren, or do we? Nope, we're going to make the end of the third quarter. You just got your answer. Fourth quarter coming up. You're watching high school playoff football on WOSN. We're back. Ireland's Health Stadium here at Perkins. A safety ended quarter number three. Our scoreboard is presented by Loudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them in Coldwater or Van Wert or online at loudix.com. So they're going to put the football on the tee, and that will allow John Slay and his big leg to use uh, to, to kick the football deep. And with the win, but with the score tied at 15. Kick is headed towards Phillips. And Phillips is over his own 40. And that's where the Cougars will begin the fourth quarter. Gruden and Rose Kelly on the stop there for the black and white. Nice luxury to have a kicker, huh? They can kick and the football is. and... So Perkins scored the only touchdown in that quarter. They took a 15-13 lead, and then Van Wert with that safety tied it up, and this will be their first possession. They've had three possessions, or opening two possessions in this half. They had to punt both times. Pratt and Parker in the backfield. Pratt will run left. A hard run. He gets a yard or two. On the, on the bottom of the pile was Adam Davis, 6'2", 230-pound lineman. Pratt got by about a yard, I guess. Yeah, trying to run away from Rowe right there. Pratt takes a snap, looks, throws. Almost picked off. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, out there was Mike Young. He had a hand on it but couldn't secure it. That would have been a pick six. You know, I'm not so sure the ball was not deflected at the line of scrimmage also. Again, that's another one to look at on replay. But You know, Darren, I'm watching Rowe, and, of course, the adage is you, you run, uh, you know, at speed and, and you run away from, from big. He's both. He's, <laughs> he's, oh, and he's, he's got the whole package. And he's fast. Third down, looking at nine are the Cougars. Now they're putting somebody there. They're going to try to chip blocking to pass protect. There's Pratt. They got a whistle first. What do we got? False start. Nope, delay a game. Delay a game. Didn't see that one coming. So that penalty will take it back to the 36. They had a couple of those last week in the win over Wasion. So it will be third now in 14. They need to get right to the midfield stripe. Get that skull and crossbones at midfield. Pratt will roll to his right. Look, throw. And he had a guy out there in Connor Campbell, but he was well guarded and couldn't get it to him. So 
Good defense there by Wes. They have played well defensively, you know, for a team that was given up 15.3. They've given up two scores, and, of course, the safety was not their fault. And big number 65 comes hobbling off, Adam, Adam Davis. See if he's able to get himself back in the game. Yeah, that's two defensive linemen. They also hobbling off earlier, I believe, was uh, Al, uh, Austin Yoakum. Excuse well, what me. what do we got? They were going to snap it to Steven Ooh. to punt, and... Perkins going to take a timeout. That is correct. Perkins timeout. 11-13 to go here in the football game. You're watching High School Playoff Football, WOSN. Our opening timeout here in the second half went to the Perkins Pirates. Collier is deep as Steeman set to punt. There's a snap, and his kick is away. Collier will let it hit, and it's going to take a nice roll. And it will go dead on the 21-yard line where Perkins will take over. So they survive the kickoff following the safety and will take over with 11.02. It'll be interesting as this fourth quarter plays on how big of a timeout that was right there on special teams. From their own 21-yard line, Logan Lesh and company. He's got Isaac Bunce. In the backfield with him, high snap, and that blew up the play. Oh, my goodness, somebody got him in the backfield. I think that somebody, yeah, it's number 23, McCracken. I thought it was, and I wanted to make sure, but the high snap ruined that play. And, of course, the good defensive play on top of it. Back to the 18, they lost three. Heck of an athletic play there by Lesh, because I'll tell you, if that ball goes over his head, it's a free ball inside the 10-yard line. Lost three, second and 13. Big hit by McCracken. This three down lineman, here's blitz coming from McCracken. They're trying to string it out and- They did. Yeah, no room for, that was number five carrying the football, Lesh. And uh, no room for him to go that time. Colin Haggerty on the stop at the boundary. Mr. First did a great job there. Containing the football along the line of scrimmage, making Lesh turn outside. Lose three, gain three. It's third and ten. Three down linemen. Let's see if they drop into coverage. They bring somebody. Just three on the rush. Pratt's trying to get around the corner. Out. He dove to catch it, did he? The official's going to give him the catch. Now, we had too many Perkins bodies in front of us, but he laid out and caught it and must have kept his feet in bounds. Appeared to be Wes Sturzinger on the catch there. That will be a Leland Smith Insurance Services first down. Your first call for all of your insurance needs. First down from their 33. They picked up 12. Uh, 10, 12. And right to the 35-yard line on that run. Lesh with the carry, picked up two. First on the stop along with, appears to be number 23, Mr. McCracken. You get the, the, the sense that things are tightening up out mm -hmm. here. You know, we got 10 minutes to go, and everybody's a little bit on edge right here, waiting for a big play. Second and eight. Yeah, this is the one where Perkins wants to take care of the football. High snap again, quick out. That's caught by, Stur by uh, Sturzinger. Wessel on the coverage. Six yard pickup to the 41. You know, a glaring stat too, Mark, was Van Wert was plus 15 in turnover margin this year and Perkins was minus three. Third and a long two. Here's Lesh. He's got Isaac Bunce in the backfield with him and three receivers to his left. He's got Sturzinger to his right. 
Play clock winding down. We're under five again. And there's the snap, high snap. Lesh runs right up the middle. He's got the first down and more and slides. Yep, that was a read directed by the coach on the sidelines to the quarterback. And he saw the opening, got as much as he could, and slid to the ground. Leland Smith Insurance, first down to the 47-yard line. Seventh play of the drive. They have gotten very patient this half, haven't they, Dan? Mm -hmm. They sure have. They've done a good job mixing in the run with the pass. Possession number four here in the half. Lesh is going to throw it deep, and oh, what a defensive play. Yes, Wessel knocked it, it away. It certainly was. He got his left hand in there and batted that football down. For a football that was in the air, 55 mm. yards, and falls incomplete. He has Sturzinger out there, but a really nice play by Wessel. Cookers were three-man rush, eight in coverage, and they just tried to throw it over the top of everybody. You know, Wessel, one of the leaders for the Cougars in interceptions with Crew and Bear with four. There's that rapidly moving play clock again. It's under five once again. Of course, the game clock is not running this time. And they just do get it off. Bunt's trying to sweep. McCracken chasing him. Parker, and Parker, Parker gets got him. him. Yep. Didn't he? he got away from Row on the block. So that actually lost a yard back to the 46. Third and 11. Yeah, that's a block Row was supposed to get, and he's frustrated, but what a great play there by Parker. Well, a great Starts with McCracken. McCracken. He's chasing him out there and made him go wide. And then the good play to get away from the block and make the tackle. Third and 11. Trips right, single receiver left. Rolls right, and still looking, still looking, throws. What do you think, is it first down, Darren? It's a first down, it? sure is, yeah. Went to Wes Sturzinger, Parker on the stop. Yep, sure is. It is to the 41, 41 of the Cougars. That is a first down. Right to the sticks. Nice job by Perkins. This drive began back on their own 21-yard line with 11.02 to go in the football game. This will be the 10th play of the drive. Rowe out in space, makes the first guy miss. And that man is a, is a load to bring down. Sure is, he got 11 right there, got it to the 30. That he did. That's all athleticism and heart right there, getting that 11 yards, because Van Wert had him Surrounded, just couldn't bring him down. Got another Leland Smith insurance first down. That's about eight yards on the yak right there, yards after contact. Down to the Cougar 30-yard line, first down. And I'm like you, he's doing a really good job controlling the tempo of this game, Lesh is. He's using the, the clock as much as he possibly can. They have burned four minutes off the clock on this drive alone. Handoff, Bunts up the middle. He will dive forward for five. Critchfield on the stop, along with McCracken. Appeared to get about four there. Yep, they moved it back to the 26, so they did give him four, second and six. Van Wert has three timeouts remaining in the football game as we are about the halfway point of quarter number four. Perkins has burned one. They have two remaining. Yeah, this is where Perk, or uh, excuse me, Van Wert's got to really buckle down defensively and get a stop here. There's Bunce again, right up the middle. Once again, he's running through tackles and dives down to the 12. Big 14-yard run and a first down. Connor Smith with a touchdown saving tackle right there. Nice burst there by Bunce right up the gut. Nice job by the interior lineman opening that hole up between the left guard and the center position. It's been a very impressive Perkins Pirates drive. This will be play number 13. This time Lesh will run to his left 
And he will go down just inside the 10. First and McCracken on the stop. I'm like you, it is at about the 10, it appears. They can get a first down at about the two yard line. It's about the nine, partner, it appears to be. I'm sure that uh, Coach Santoro would like six or seven or eight right here, but he does sure. have a tremendous field mm -hmm. goal kicker this year, and, and John Slay should it come to that. Pirates not thinking three now. They're thinking something in addition to that. Here's Bunts right up the middle and dives into the end zone. There's their six points. Yeah, they saw something right there. Smith with the tackle just a little bit too late. And on that drive, definitely the coaches up here in the press box have seen something because these last three minutes, they've tried to run the football right down the gut of Van Wart's defense. Extra points are brought to you by Lee Kinsel on West Irving Road in Van Wert. Take a look at our pre-owned specials at LeeKinsel.com. Here's the PAT by Slay. It sails through. The Perkins Pirates with 5.16 to go in the contest have taken a 22-15 lead. You're watching high school playoff football, WOSN. The Perkins Pirates take 14 plays. They go 79 yards. It took five minutes and 46 seconds for them to do so. With the PAT by Slay, they have taken a 22-15 lead on the Van Wert Cougars. This is a big possession coming up, Darren. The Cougars have been uh, punt, punt, punt here in the second half, and they now trail by seven. Yeah, they can't put themselves in a position where it's third and long. Ball's going to roll along. Finally going to be fallen on by Phillips. And this is where the Cougars will begin this possession. They have all of their timeouts remaining. And where will the football be set down at? Just outside yeah. the 20, it appears. We will call it the 21 for stat purposes sake. Aiden Pratt has four receivers to his left this time. First time we've seen this formation. Pratt, quick throw, caught on the far side of the field. Lots of running room on the far side of the field. Sure was. Is that Gunter? It's, yeah, it's Garrett Gunter, number 10. Nemitz run him out of bounds, but a big, big game there by the Cougars. First down, takes the football to the 39. That's an 18-yard pickup. This pass to this side. This is Phillips. Phillips over midfield. Second straight completion, second straight big gain. All the way to the 47-yard line. Everett on the stop. Cougars going to this that wide open yeah. set here. Pass out at the far side of the field. This is Phillips again, and he will be up near the first down. They've been chewing up My goodness. Leland Smith Insurance for Service first down like crazy here on this drive. Dietrich on the stop to for the Perkins. 37 yard line. Just exactly what they needed. And we're going to get a very quick timeout. Sandusky Perkins. We're going to take a break also. 4.43 to go. You're watching high school playoff football, WSN. We're back at Perkins High School. Timeout Perkins with Van Wert Cougars on a roll here. Three straight completions, three straight first downs. Pratt again, throws, caught. I believe that is Gunter on the far side of the field. Big, big block over there by number 11, Maddox Crutchfield. To the 29-yard line, that is a pickup of eight. A lot of time left, 4.20 to go. Plenty of time for the Cougars. Pratt changing the play with orders from the sidelines. Trips left, two receivers right. Pratt to throw, throws it to the end zone. He's got Phillips out here. Phillips oh, with a catch. Oh, what a catch. And he got knocked out of bounds right about the two yard line. Wow, what a throw and a catch. Five straight completions on this drive. Aiden Pratt, and they have a first down knocking on the door at the two-yard line. 
Phillips has been quiet all night long. What a big catch by that young man. Here's Pratt up the middle, lowers his head, and powers into the end zone. Aiden Pratt, his 11th rushing touchdown of the year. No panic by the Cougars. Wow. They've been there before. You know what I'm saying in close contests? Nice composure, nice drive right there. The question is, Mark, did you give Perkins too much time on the clock? Well, you know, this you extra gotta, you point gotta is score. huge. You're, you're down, you gotta yep, score. Yep, you gotta score. Here comes McCracken on. I agree. He will be trying our Lee Kinsel extra point. Yeah, this is a big one because he had one fact. blocked earlier. Trying to tie it up. And we had movement oh, up front. Oh boy, I think we got a. Yeah. Oh, we got a false start. Is that what it is? I saw a movement. Up, uh, let's see. Oh, they now he it changed it. Now he went to went to encroachment. Well, you know, if they move that forward a yard and a half, that really puts a decision. Oh, yes, on, it does. On Coach Record, doesn't it? Let's see what the call is. It Offside, is Perkins. It is, and they're going to go for two. The yard and a half penalty puts it inside. Well, we saw earlier that quick go. pitch. Let's see if we just don't go right up the gut right uh, here if you're the Cougars. Let's see if Pratt runs a wrap the middle. That he does. Pratt lowers his shoulder, powers towards the end zone. He's in. Yep, you're not going to deny that, senior. Aiden Pratt runs in the two-point PAT, and his team has taken a 23-22 lead with 3.58 to go in the football game. High School Playoff Football, WOSN. The Van Wert Cougars go 79 yards, six plays. They took a minute 18 off the clock, the two-point PAT, and they are ahead 23-22. Perkins with 3.58 to go, trails by a point, and they have only one timeout remaining. That's the key, Mark, what you were just getting ready, what you just said is that one timeout, that extra timeout that they used on that special teams, on that punt. Let's see how big that plays here in this last 3.58. McCracken's kickoff, Bunce is deep, he along with Nemitz. The kickoff has been directed toward Nemitz all night and this one will be as well. Best but kick of the night. How about that, he got it into the end zone. Into the breeze. That would absolutely be correct. If they were to Cougar fans on the far side of the field, they appreciated that. And now let's see what Logan Lesh, the junior quarterback can do on this possession trailing by one. You know it. Has Perkins been in a game like this before this year, you know? Well, if you look back over their scores on the season, they were uh, had an overtime win over Elyria Catholic in week two. Mm -hmm. They beat Huron by a point. Two-point win over Norwalk. Other than that, yes, they've been uh, pretty successful this season. But they have played some close. Here's Lesh running to his right, and they get him in the backfield. Sure did. Who was that? First, I believe. There it is. He has had a nice game first with a tackle. Well, you know what the great play is there, too? He kept him in bounds. He didn't let him get to the boundary where he could run out of bounds and get that clock to stop. Nice job by that young man. Back to the 20-yard line they go. Second down. Mr. First has had a heck of a ball game. It's that three-man rush. Two safeties. Butts goes to the right side of Lesh. Now that play clock working against him a bit. They've been so patient. Lesh to look, throw, plenty of time. He's going to throw it deep. He's got Rowe out here. And did he catch it? He did. What a big catch. What a catch by Jaden Rowe. Really well defended there by Gage Steeman also. All the way to the Cougar 31-yard line. That's a 49-yard completion and a first down. Back to the line of scrimmage they come. Big time catch by big time player. Under three. Play clock at five. Here's Bunts. That play worked on the previous possession they had. Not much that time. 
Remember, Darren, they have a, a field That's goal kicker with a big wheel. You betcha. And he's made seven this year. I'm not so sure they don't put the football in the middle of the field. You know what I'm saying? I uh, totally agree with you. McCracken right there on the stop along with. Well, they need a, a first down or two, I would think, Crutchfield. to get him into range with a single timeout left. Let's see. Approaching two minutes to go. Hand off Bunts. And he got some running room again. Inside the 25. Steeman and appeared to be him and McCracken on the stop. Took that to the 23 yard line. Big, big play here, huh? This is third and two. Do you keep the ball in the middle of the field? Well, Bunts has been running well. Let's see if they go with him. That would be the case. He makes the first guy miss, but not Pratt. Pratt got him, didn't he? Yeah, they brought McCracken, McCracken yep. on the blitz, and he just avoided him, but Pratt was there to meet him, and I think he actually lost about a yard, yard and a half, and Van yeah. Wert's going to take a timeout. Back to the 24-yard line they go. It will now be fourth down and about three. I'm looking at the scoreboard, Darren. Which one called the timeout? Well, Van Wert did, and I think here's why. You, you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you get drawn off if they go into a – the field goal situation, and they try to cadence the call, and then you get an encroachment call on you, or you set your defense if they come out and try to go for it on fourth down. You know, great, great, great timeout, in my opinion, by Van Wert right there. You can go over all the options with them. The winner of this football game will get the winner of Millersburg, West Holmes, and St. Mary's. West Holmes was 11 and 0, St. Mary's 9 and 2, and we move to Saturday night in the Division Four. Next weekend, first two weekends, everybody played on Friday. Let's and see let's what say, they're going to they do. They do not have their field goal unit out they there. They're going to go, gonna go for it. Nope, they, there's Lesh. All right. Fourth and a long two. 134 to go. They look at the sideline for the play call. This is where Van well, Wert's just got to be fundamentally sound. Rowe is on the right side of the formation. He, along with Sturzinger, and two receivers to the left. Yeah, I think they're trying to get uh, their set based on what They, they may be calling a timeout Van here, there. Is. And there is the final may, Perkins they, timeout. They may put it into their, to, to their kicker's leg and see what he can do. So with 1.34 to go in the football game, Perkins takes their final timeout. Now, Darren, the football is just inside the 25-yard line. A field goal is looking at 42 yards or so should they choose to go in that direction. Here on the scoreboard, the guy in front of us has his computer up. It says the West Holmes Knight 56 and St. Mary's 21. And that was 21 to 21 late in the second quarter. So the winner of this game apparently is going to get West Holmes next week. Well, you talked to me in pregame that you'd heard West Holmes was really, 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 good, really, really, really good. explosive. And they have a, I think they've had nine games this year of 30 points or more. And if they put 56 on a pretty good St. Mary's defensive team tonight, that would be quite an Correct. accomplishment at home, of course. Yep, and that's that's no shame to St. Mary's. Not at all. So here we go. They are uh, bringing their offense back on the field. It is fourth and a long two. Lesh alone in the backfield. Snap, look, he want to throw it over the middle of the field, it's caught. He put the ball right into the hands of Caden Nixon. Mr. Nixon probably made the biggest play of the game for that young man or for the season. What a pitch and catch right there, brought down by Maddox Crutchfield. He only had 16 catches on the season, so kind of somebody you could hide a little bit and not expect to get the football. He makes the play. And they have the football on their own 15. 115 to go in the game. There are no timeouts remaining for the black shirts. Lesh will run up the middle. Now we're playing field goal, Darren. Guess who? Pratt, Pratt with the tackle. Sure did. Shedded that block by the left tackle. Got him by the ankles. You're right. I agree with you. I think they're going to run the thing down and put it into the kicker's hands. Van Wert going to take one here? It apparently is a Van Wert timeout. Let's see what the call is and make sure it is 
54 seconds to go. Darren and I are taking a break. You're watching High School Playoff Football, WOSN. We're back at Perkins High School, 54 seconds to go. That was a band work timeout. Conversing with some of the people here in the Perkins press box, their field goal kicker, and that would be John Slay, was also the leading scorer on their soccer team this year. He's got a big wheel. He's made seven field goals this year and all of his extra points. But I'm like you. I think they're going to try to keep the ball into the... Yeah center of the field to give him a better angle. The officials said to put two seconds back on the clock, so there are 56 seconds remaining. Bunce is in the backfield along with Lesh. Got to keep an eye on Rowe. This is Bunce, and he oh, runs nice into play. McCracken who got the tackle. Sure did. Shedded the block there. And McCracken's tackle pushes the football back to the 17 yard, and that was a four yard loss. Yep, shedded Papanu's block right there. Nice play right there. More importantly, the clock's running. Third and 11. Is it a pass play? They got to throw it and get it out of bounds, right? Is that picked off? Oh. Nope, it's caught, but it's in bounds. The clock is running. They got to hurry and get a field goal unit out there. And we are looking at, oh, we got an injured player. An injured oh, player. and that's going to stop the clock. The pass was completed. I thought it was going to get picked off. It was right there, right about the 15-yard line. Yeah, I think it was Wessel. Boy, you hate to see anybody get hurt, but quite honestly, at this point in time, it favors Perkins. They were going to have to rush their field goal unit out and try to make something happen in 19 seconds, and the clock stopped for them. It's not Collier. Surrounded, of course, by medical people, so we're having a, a difficult time figuring this one out. Van Wert still has a timeout left, too, Darren. So we'll see how Coach Recker chooses to play this. Perkins trailing by a point. And their field goal kicker is John Slay, is a 6'4 senior. You would think that he would take and let him line up and then burn the timeout, you know what I'm saying, to try yeah. to ice him. Well, this, uh, the other part of this is it has been a long time with this uh, injury-type situation. He's going to set his foot down right at about the, what, 27-yard line? No, 22-yard line. So this is going to be a 32-yard attempt when uh, this – This drive began back on their own 20-yard line with 3.58 to go. They have run nine plays to get to this particular point. Yeah, this is like the free throw shooter with one second left on the clock, you know, and there's an injury in the basketball game. Now, now the free throw shooter's got to think long and hard about it, and this young man, Mr. Slade, is in the same situation, just a different sport. Well, let's take a, a look, too, at this. I'm looking for their long snapper on this, and uh, they did not give us that information. They gave us Carol. The holder is Lesh, which we knew. Mm -hmm. But they did not give us the long snapper. We'll catch that when uh, that is Sturge. That is Sturgingser who was hurt. Yeah, Wes Sturgingser. So it looks like number 75 will get over the ball. That's Sanchez. Let's see if Van Word doesn't take a timeout to ice him. Lesh is the holder, Slay. And there is the timeout that you described. And this will be Van Word's final timeout. Well, Darren, I expected a close football game. I expected one of those, you know, 42 40 games, but uh, this has been quite the high school football game. Well, it's either going to go in or we're going to go to overtime. Right? Or no, I'm no, sorry. You're right. 23 either, 22. You're right. My, my apologies. This is, uh, this yeah, is this a game is winner. the game winner yes, right it here. Is. My apologies. 
And so here we go. We got uh, Slay on the field, and we'll see how they play this one out. Out of town or can't get WSN? WSN is now streaming 24-7 on Roku and Apple TV. Download our Roku channel, Apple TV app to subscribe. A $100 donation allows you to watch anywhere in the world. You can visit us at app.wsn.tv to sign up. Catch games like this all year long. From you know, as you said earlier, this kid, you know, was really good in soccer, leading scorer on their soccer team. From the 22-yard line, high snap. Oh, it's and blocked. It they blocked it. The sure ball's did. loose. Picked it up. Parker, Braylon Parkers, steaming up the sideline. Parker's He's headed for. He's going to score. He's going to run around and try to kill as much clock as he can. And then he steps into the end zone. What a smart play by that young man. And they have surrounded him on the far side of the field. And look at the Cougars celebrate. What a high school football what game. What an absolutely wonderful high school football game. This is one where you don't like to see one team advance and one team go home. So the Van Wert Cougars block a field goal on the final play of the game. And I, I quite honestly, Darren, I don't know who knocked there it down. There was two or three of them in, That's in the correct. backfield. But I do know that Brylan Parker picked it up and he skated along the end zone until the clock ran out. What a huge play by that young man. And this one sure comes was. to an end. The yeah, Van he wasn't, he, Mark, excuse me, he wasn't trying to showboat or anything. He, he was trying to use as much time up as he could and run as much time off that clock as he could and found, found the end zone. Smart play by that young man. Jalen Santoro's Perkins Pirates will finish a very fine season at 10-2. and two. They were 5-0 and oh in the Sandusky Bay Conference Lake Division. Keith Wreckers, Van Wert Cougars, they will go to 11-1 and one on the season and they will play Millersburg West Holmes next week. At a site to be a determined. site to be determined on Sunday afternoon. We want to thank our scoreboard sponsor tonight. That's been Loudnick's Jewelry. Our first down sponsor tonight was Leland Smith Insurance, and our extra point sponsor tonight was Lee Kinsel Sales and Service. The athletic director here, Mr. Ted Sturgingson, Sturginger, set everything up for us this evening. We appreciate that. Jacob and O'Neill and Matt Brown did all of our camera work and audio work and all that. Zach Keith and Nick Fralick will edit this back at the station. The Van Wert Cougars move on with an exciting 23-21 win over the Perkins Pirates. You've been watching high school playoff football on WOSN. We're back here at Perkins High School with Aiden Pratt. Aiden, your team struggles in the second half. You go three and out or three punts in the second half. You need a big drive. Talk about the last drive. Uh, that, that's, uh, that started since we were in June. Uh, working our butts off every day. And we just kept saying uh, to each other that we got to do this for each other. We don't got to do it for ourselves. We got to do it for each other. And we, uh, we made a good play at the end of the game. Uh, and that's a good example of not stopping until the whistle blows. So that yeah. was a great win. Aiden, you, know, you completed four consecutive passes, then you run the touchdown, then the PAT. Your, your passing was on the mark, and your receivers made good plays for you. Yeah, uh, that's just that's also from the summer, building relationships with those guys uh, on and off the field. We're, we're all best of friends, so I think that has something to do with it. But, yeah, we had great timing tonight, and uh, our O-line battled really hard tonight, and we – We'll look back at the film and make some changes, but it was a great win. Aiden, how about the last play, the block, P, uh, the block field goal attempt? Talk about that play. What happened? Uh, so we, we brought pressure up the middle, and then one of our guys uh, snuck off the end, got a few hands on it, and then our running back grabbed it and returned it for a touchdown. So I, I just I have to give all the, all the credit to those guys giving 100% effort. Uh, it, it was just an awesome play. How about the play by number seven, just running along the goal line there, run the clock out. That's a pretty yeah. smart play. Yeah, that was a smart play. I'm, I didn't even catch it. I was crying already. All right. Hey, you got a win tonight. We're into the regional semifinals next week. Your thoughts for your team right now? Uh, just stay together. Uh, stay motivated. Uh, uh, yeah, that's about it. We, we, got, we got goals, and we're trying to reach those every day. Aiden Pratt, thank you very much. Thank hey, you, 
Van Wert wins 23-22. They move into the regional semis. You're watching high school playoff football, WSN.